Hey, there's John Jacques walking towards me. Hello, John. No Katya today? Oh, I did ask her to join me. She was hesitant. I guess she didn't want to run into you. That Kundastru guy, she said. She finds you a bit of a moralist. Boring, you mean? And those bogus attempts at the French language. She finds it all a bit too much. That was sufficient response for my solicitation. The truth is blinding, just like the sun. But I recovered and then said, John, I must have forgotten to give you my calling card. Here it is. Nariel Kundastru, Lotus Leaf Trader. Lily pads, John. And play actor. Play actor? Yes, from Adugutania. Is French commonly spoken in Adugutania? In a way, we use words from all languages, not one in particular. Then there are sounds, gestures, expressions. The sound of your name, John, is equivalent to share, charimo, even. But no matter, I wish to give no offense. No more French from me. Are you gesturing? Get back to the story? Oh, of course. But thank you for your generosity, your curiosity. Then we talked, John and I. He agreed to play a little game. This novel, The Stranger by Albert Camus. Camus scholars out there, they're always enlightening you. They'd say, without being too pedantic, that the story is divided into two parts, kingdom and exile, separating the two parts, the pivotal few moments, the time of the shooting. I thought it'd be good for us to isolate it, give it its own identity. So we say BS and AS, before shooting and after. But the time of the crime, we could imagine it as this magical, enclosed, room, without walls, of course. Call it the vestibule. Our assignment today is to go back in time, into the vestibule, make some observations and summarize our findings. So here we are. Barely furnished, isn't it, John? Yes, rather bright in here. Too much sun. Oh, look, a tapestry. It's an illusion. It appears and then fades away. Laurache Foucault's Neither the sun nor death can be looked at with a steady eye. What else can we see? Oh, look, I see an illusion to a door. It's the door that Marceau would knock four times in a few moments. Here we have the man with the knife entering the frame and Marceau entering the frame at the same time from the opposite direction. The sun is reflecting off the man's blade, hitting Marceau directly in the eye. Merceau. His vision is already compromised because of the beads of perspiration that have settled on his eyebrows. It's all shimmer. What happens next is this La Rochefoucauld maxim being put to the test at its optimum level. The knife on the man's hand, due to the sun's reflection, appears as a sword, a sort of medieval theme. Merceau is faced with looking directly at these two existential interlocutors, the sun and death. Simultaneously, you see, in the Lorochefoucault maxim, there seems to be a separation because of the word neither. But here, the presentation is simultaneous. What happens? Time comes to a standstill. Merceau, in this state of cosmic emergency, knows he has to do something extraordinary. Marceau is responding to a call for help. It's no ordinary call. For Jean and me, the start of a Beethoven symphony. Bam, 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 bam. The result? Success. He has restarted time. What else do you see, John? A life has been sacrificed. Just one? No, wait. Two. One of them is immediate, and the other a reflection of Marceau. His image beginning to fade. John asked me, have we got enough for our report to summarize? I'm not quite sure, John. 
I still have questions. And he said, Okay, just a little pinprick. There'll be no ah, ah, but you may feel a little sick. Can you stand up? I do believe it's working. Good.